So you would have thought a game like GTA Online by this point would have had a decent matchmaking system added to the game by this point. Now I say decent because there is technically already a matchmaking system in the game, it's just horseshit. So in today's video I want to talk about how you can renew that completely and also add something in for free roam so new players don't get blitz on the first day. So if you do going to enjoy today's video or you do just find it interesting, informative or anything of the sorts then be sure you do leave a like on the video and subscribe notifications on as that helps grow the channel and also you yeah, don't want to miss out on any future videos or live streams as I'm getting back to doing the live streams now. However with all this said and done let's just get right into today's topic. So firstly yes GT Online does already have a matchmaking system of the sorts when you are a host. When you are a host you have the option to invite skilled matched players, however people have probably only just clicked this and they've never looked into the list behind it because it's uh it's interesting the list to say the least. So sometimes some players on the list make complete sense. This guy ranked 232, a KD of 1.5, high KD and about half my rank, but all his stats are maxed out. Yes, I would say that guy is fair enough to get invited. This guy, again, 387, a KD double mine and max stats. He's probably quite fair. This guy though, I... I don't think it's quite fair. Rank 86, a KD of 0.44, and the only reason he's been matched with me as skilled on the same level as me is because his driving is the exact same. That's the only reason, that's how this matchmaking system works. So all someone needs to do to get on this list for me is just have their driving maxed out, which basically every new player has it maxed out within one to two weeks, so long as they're playing kind of regularly, they're taking part in races and all that other stuff. So how would Rockstar go about fixing this and changing this for the better? Well, it's actually really, really simple. Completely scrap the entire idea of stats and replace it with how long that individual has been in races for. And before you say it's difficult to track, it's already in the game. You can already do it. You right now can go into your pause menu, go to stats, go to career, and you can see right there, time spent in races. And for me, it's six days, 13 hours, 56 minutes, and 14 seconds. That is how long I have spent in races. So go off that time. Someone that would be good for matchmaking for me would be someone who spent six days, 10 hours, six days, 20 hours, somewhere around my time, maybe give or take like an extra day or two. So the max it would go is seven days and 13 hours and the minimum it would go is five days and 13 hours. And then everyone in between that would be who would be suitable for a matchmaking partner for me. That is how I think the matchmaking system should be done and should be done for everything, for sea races, it's going to be different. So do it off that, obviously. If you're doing some sort of bike, push bike race, do it off that. Same for even being on a bike, a bike race. Change it for that as well. Don't compete people that have been driving for the past hour and then go on to a bike and have the exact same people. Because there's going to be different scale on bikes compared to cars. At least I know that for me. And so that's how I think matchmaking should be done. Now obviously this is not going to eliminate the fact that low ranks or low ranking people can join, it just makes the whole matchmaking system so much better and if low ranks want to join just by obviously inviting them from your past lobby then go for it but just making the matchmaking system will be a whole lot better and that is how I think it should be done. It should be based off the time you spend in a job not your rank within that job on your stats. However now going on for how free mode should be fixed and it can be done in the exact same fucking way because obviously if you're tracked with the amount of time that you spend in races you're obviously going to be tracked with how long you are spending in the whole game as it is entirety now i've been playing this game for four and a half years now just a little bit over four and a half years this christmas this december will be five years from my account so Happy birthday, halfway for a decade, let's see if GTA 6 gets released before my character hits a decade old and cross my fingers. However, within them years that I've been playing, I've sunk 104 days, 16 hours, 55 minutes and 21 seconds. Obviously, this isn't a live counter going up, so if I was to log off and then log back on, this number would have gone up a little bit as soon as I, I am playing in GTA Online right now. However, that is how long I have played. So... Again, match make me with people that have obviously 
had that similar amount of time. Obviously, not the entire lobby, because then for players like me, it's just going to be full of griefers, because by this point, a lot of people have just done what they want to do, and they're just going to mess, and they're going to troll. Obviously, you have a couple people, maybe, here and there, but not as many low ranks. And then, there'll be dedicated low rank servers. So then, obviously, when a brand new player comes in, not only could they potentially help out other low ranks, so obviously they can play the game together, but also they won't get blitzed out of oblivion on the first day from a cargo griefer whenever they try and sell something or they do some sort of mission and some guy is on the oppressor map too just stealing all the crates and they just have a really really bad time because that will also eliminate the problem of griefers getting in to low rank lobbies because obviously they can't just make a second account have all their money in their cash and then just use it on their second account by an oppressor map too and get in these low rank lobbies because it's based off your xbox or playstation or steam account with how long you spend in gta online it's based off of that not the individual character that you have however the problem would then come in for modders obviously just getting brand new accounts getting in these lobbies and then just fucking with the new players however that is when rockstar would add an anti-cheat however that's an entirely different video that i could probably talk about for like 20 minutes talking about all the modded websites that are still up and running. Granted, they are doubling down on them, they are shutting some down. However, it is still quite popular, especially on PC. However, let me know what you guys think about this video down in the comment section down below. Do you think my whole matchmaking system would work, or do you think it would be completely pointless and free roam doesn't really need a matchmaking system? Do you think jobs need this matchmaking system, or do you think only free roam needs a matchmaking system, or do you think both of them need the matchmaking system? Let me know with a comment down below. However, with all this said and done, hopefully you enjoyed today's video. If you did, again, leave a like on the video, subscribe notifications on so you don't miss out on any future videos or live streams as they're coming back on the regular. Go check out some other videos because they're playing more interesting to watch. Hope you have a fan fucking fantastic rest of your day and I'll see you guys in the next one.